The Chocolate Touch by Patrick Skeen Catley, illustrated by Margot Apple. Chapter 4 John had the bad habit of chewing things when he was thinking hard. This morning, he had several things to think about. What had made the toothpaste taste like chocolate? What had made the orange juice taste like chocolate? What had made the bacon and egg taste like chocolate? What had made the toast and butter and marmalade taste like chocolate? Each one of these things had felt the way it had always felt before. The toothpaste had been soft and pasty. The bacon had been hot, crisp, and oily. The toast had been crunchy, and the marmalade sticky and lumpy. But everything had tasted like the chocolate he had eaten in bed last night. John put a gloved thumb in his mouth and thoughtfully chewed. His mother had frequently pointed out to him that chewing his gloves made little holes that let in the cold air. But he chewed them just the same when he was thinking hard. This time, he noticed something very queer about the thumb of his glove. Instead of tasting leathery, it tasted like chocolate. John pulled his thumb out of his mouth. The part of the glove that had been in his mouth was now brown instead of black like the rest. He bit the end of the leather thumb again. It came right off in his mouth, leaving his own thumb bare. John chewed, and it was like chewing leather made of chocolate. Leather that melted like chocolate. In a second or two, he swallowed it. The gloves were not new. John had had them quite a while. He couldn't understand why he had never thought of eating them before. He tried to tear off one of the fingers, but the leather was too strong for him. He put it into his mouth, and it immediately turned into chocolate. Then he was able to break it off easily. He popped it into his mouth and chewed it up and swallowed it. It was delicious. Walking along, devouring his glove, John did not notice one of his schoolfellows, Spider Wilson, until he heard his voice. John's gone crazy! John's gone crazy! Spider yelled. Then he turned to John. Don't they feed you where you live? He sneered. Spider was in the grade just above John's and was one of the meanest and slyest boys in the whole school. John gulped down a large piece of the second glove's palm and looked pleased. What's the matter? Spider demanded. Do your people make you eat leather? This is special leather, John replied. He licked his lips and sighed contentedly. It turns into chocolate as soon as you put it into your mouth. Look! John bit off the glove's little finger and took it out of his mouth. Now it's chocolate. He put it back into his mouth and gulped it down. Give me a piece, Spider said. Why should I? John wanted to know. They're my gloves. Hand over a piece, Spider said. Do I eat your gloves? John asked reasonably, his mouth full of chocolate. Why should you eat mine? Those aren't real gloves, Spider said. Whenever one person has candy, he has to share it with the others. That's the club rule. What club? John asked. Never mind what club, Spider said. But you'd better let me have some of that chocolate. Without waiting longer, Spider snatched what was left of the second glove. John was too surprised to resist, and he didn't want to anyhow. He had a feeling that he'd had enough chocolate for a while. He was getting a bit thirsty. Spider ran only a little way ahead. When he saw that John wasn't going to fight to get the glove back, he started to eat his prize. He stuffed the leather into his mouth and took a big bite. Spider stopped short in his tracks. He frowned and bit deep into the leather again. Disgusting! It tasted worse than just leather. It tasted like leather, with which a boy had made mud pies and snowballs and patted old dogs. John thought perhaps he might be getting late for school, so he started running. He left Spider Wilson spitting the soggy remains of the glove into the gutter. 
still giggling to himself about the defeat of the enemy, John walked between the great stone pillars at the entrance to the school grounds. He had gone no more than halfway to the main building when he heard Susan Buttercup calling him. She was standing near the jungle gym with some of her friends. I've got something to show you, John, she shouted. As she came running to meet him, he could see that she was waving something in her hand that flashed as it caught the rays of the sun. It was a silver dollar. It's a birthday present, she explained, showing him the dollar. Isn't it beautiful? The sight of such wealth made John forget the triumphs of his own day. It's a good present, he said. Are you sure it's made of silver, though? I once got a whole bag of gold coins in a Christmas stocking. Only they were chocolate coins covered with gold paper. Of course it's real, silly, Susan said. My daddy said so. You can feel it if you don't believe me. She handed him the coin. John looked at the coin suspiciously. All right, Susan said. Bite it if you think it isn't real. Go on, bite it. John felt rather silly. I can see it's real now, he said. I don't have to bite it. But I want you to, Susan insisted. You weren't sure. Well, make sure. That's what they always do on television. When a cowboy wants to make sure a dollar's real, he bites it. John put the dollar about halfway into his mouth and reluctantly bit it. His teeth went right through the coin. The part that had passed between his lips was hard, but sweet chocolate. Susan could hardly believe her eyes. She had given John a complete circle of silver. He sadly handed back a crescent. John didn't know what to say. Susan couldn't speak. Tears trickled down her cheeks like rain down a window pane. She looked at the piece of dollar in her hand. She looked up at John, whose face was red with embarrassment. John Midas, Susan blurted out at last. I hate you. She turned and ran away before John could think of anything at all to say. I like chocolate everywhere. But I do not like it in my dog.